Let's talk about inflammation. Not the kind that saves your life, but the kind that slowly chips away at it. When you cut your hand, it gets a little red, maybe a little warm and swollen. That's acute inflammation. After an injury, your immune system rushes in to clean up the mess, and then it shuts off. Now, that off switch is really critical, but as we get older, that switch can get a little sticky. Instead of turning off, it tends to hum along with a slow background sizzle. Scientists actually have a name for it. They call it inflammation. Aging. It's a mix of, guess what, inflammation and aging. And it shows up in many of the diseases that we see after the age of 50. Heart disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, arthritis, even cancer. So what's really going on? This review article lays it out pretty well, so I'll put the link down below so you can check it out. But think of your immune system like a thermostat. When you're young, it heats up really fast when it's needed, and it cools down just as fast as well. After 50, the thermostat gets a little faulty. It stays turned up a few degrees all the time. And that slow burn is what damages tissue and drives disease. Now, let's look at what turns the thermostat up in the first place. Number one are false alarms. So your immune cells are built to spot danger, things like germs, bacteria, damaged tissue. And so when your cells get stressed and they leak distress signal, whether it's from an infection or an injury, it's your body's way of saying, hey, something's wrong, something needs attention. And that's useful short term, but when the alarm never shuts off, your immune system stays on edge. And that constant red alert is one of the big causes of inflammation. Now, number two, the cleanup crew slows down. Normally, after your body fights off infection or heals a wound, it flips a switch from attack mode to resolve. Now, this cleanup phase uses special molecules. Many of them are made from omega-3 fats, and they help calm things down, and they help the tissue heal. But with age, the cleanup process gets sluggish and debris piles up, and so the fire just keeps smoldering. Number three is something called mitochondrial sparks. Inside every cell are tiny little power plants that are called mitochondria, and they make energy for the cell. But they also create these sparks, which are called free radicals. And when we're young, those sparks are really easy to clean up. But as we age, the cleanup slows. Those sparks start burning holes in our DNA, in our proteins, in cell walls. And that damage itself becomes another danger signal and inflammation just goes up again and the cycle just keeps spinning on and on. Number four is the junk problem. Our cells have a built-in recycling system called autophagy and autophagy breaks down old cells and replaces them with new ones but that system weakens with age as well so junk just builds up and that junk it sends more danger signals to the immune system. More inflammation, more damage. Number five are retired cells that just won't won't leave. Now, some cells retire when they've divided too many times. They stop working, but they don't die. They just kind of sit there and they spew chemical noise, kind of like a neighbor blasting music at 2 a.m. One neighbor doing that is annoying. Millions are toxic and all the police come and it's a big mess. Number six is the fire alarm inside your cells. Now, every cell has a built-in alarm system and it's something called an inflammasome. And it's supposed to go off only when there's real danger like infection or high blood sugar but after 50 it gets hypersensitive and it starts reacting to things like cholesterol crystals or stress signals when it goes off it releases chemical messengers that ramp up inflammation even more and all of those mechanisms are the core chemistry of inflammation now how does this show up in the real world in our bodies well in your arteries inflammation builds plaque in your brain, it fuels memory loss and cognitive decline. In your joints, it makes them achy and stiff. In your pancreas, it pushes you towards diabetes, and it even helps cancer cells survive and spread. So it's this low-grade inflammation that drives a lot of what we actually call aging. But the good news is that there are a lot of ways to cool the fire down. And so I'm gonna talk about 10 of them here. And number one is just moving your body. Exercise is one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory inflammatory tools that we actually have, and it's something that we have control over. It turns on the cleanup pathways inside your cells, it helps your mitochondria work better, and it lowers those background danger signals. So if you're over 50, lift weights two to three times per week, make sure you're doing some aerobic exercise, whether that's walking, swimming, cycling, make sure to keep it steady and sustainable. Do something that you'll keep doing. Consistency cools inflammation, and that's important. Number two is 
eating for resolution. Your body uses omega-3 fats like EPA and DHA to make molecules that end inflammation. You'll get those from salmon, sardines, mackerel, fatty fish. You can get them through supplements as well. At the same time, cut back or eliminate ultra processed foods. They crank up inflammation. A Mediterranean diet works well with colorful vegetables, olive oil, nuts, lean protein. You can incorporate a keto style diet as well. The big key is to get away from factory made foods which aren't real in the first place and they aren't good for the human body. Number three, mind your timing and the quantity of what you eat. Too much food, especially too often, keeps your immune alarm turned on. That's why intermittent fasting or eating in shorter time frame windows can help lower inflammation and improve cell cleanup. Just make sure you protect your muscle and that you're getting good protein and you're doing resistance training. Number four, control the basics. Make sure your blood pressure and your blood glucose are under control. If your blood glucose is out of control or your blood pressure is high, this is a danger signal for your vascular system and it's important to pay attention to that. Number five, protect your sleep. Poor sleep and high stress light up your inflammation genes. Treat sleep like a prescription, a dark room, regular schedule, cut caffeine late in the day and wind down with intention. A calm brain helps calm the immune system. Number Number six, build and keep muscle. Muscle isn't just for strength. It's an anti-inflammatory organ. When you lose muscle, inflammation increases. When you gain it, inflammation drops. Lift, push, pull, squat, carry. It's medicine without a prescription. Number seven, trim the middle. Visceral fat, that belly fat underneath the muscle of your abdominal cavity acts like an inflammation factory. Just losing a few inches can drop your cytokine levels. Small wins matter. One better meal one extra walk, one belt notch at a time. Number eight, feed your gut. Your gut microbiome is like a control room for your immune system. Good bacteria calm inflammation, bad ones stir it up. Feed the good ones with vegetables, berries, whole foods, fermented foods can help, things like yogurt and sauerkraut. A healthy gut limits the danger signals leaking into your bloodstream. Number nine, supportive supplements. Omega-3s, curcumin, berberine, all of these can help nudge inflammation pathways waves in the right direction. They're not magic, but they can help complement the healthy habits that you're developing. All right, you know, I'm going to say it. Talk to your doctor first, especially if you're on medication, you're taking blood thinners. They need to know what supplements that you're using. Number 10, medical tools when needed. In medicine, we use drugs that also cool inflammation like metformin to regulate blood glucose, antihypertensive to get blood pressure under control. Sometimes you need medication to support other things that you're doing to stay healthy, even when you feel like you're doing everything right. Bottom line, your body isn't supposed to be anti-inflammatory all the time. It's supposed to know when to fight and when to resolve. The resolution phase, that's where healing occurs. You strengthen it by moving often, sleeping well, eating smart, keeping stress in check. So if you're over 50, here's a weekly game plan that you can use. Lift two to three days per week. Make sure you're strengthening your muscle. Walk most days, 20 to 40 minutes. Eat protein, vegetables, healthy fats every day. Sleep like it's your job. Practice one stress relief habit every day, breathing, prayer, journaling, quiet time. Cut non-essential extra calories, sodas, snacks, processed foods, late night eating. Each small step cools the fire just a little bit more. And the bottom line, inflammation isn't just one thing. It's a network, worn out mitochondria, sticky immune switches, tired cleanup crews, and too little recovery time. But every good habit, every good meal, every walk, every good night's sleep teaches your immune system balance, when to attack and when to stand down. If you haven't watched this video about the dangers of visceral fat, watch it next. If you found this video helpful, please share this with someone you feel would benefit fit from watching it as well. As always, these videos are for education. They're not medical advice. Work with your doctor on a plan that's just right for you. Stay strong, stay curious, and keep that metabolic thermostat set just right. Be well, and I will see you in the next video.